Hello and welcome. This is In the Studio, episode number 66. Today I'm going to show you one method for creating a more interesting and effective send or auxiliary channel for your sounds. There's many approaches you can take here, but we'll be uh, looking into one method here that I think you might find some value in. So let's get right to it. I'll play you the little loop here and then we'll uh, get going. Okay, so we're going to create a auxiliary channel for these uh, little stabs here. This one and this one. You know, rather than just putting on a simple delay, a simple reverb on separate, you know, auxiliary channels, we're going to be doing a little bit more here and, and make that a little bit more interesting and give us a little bit more options, maybe in the arrangement process. So let's get right to it. First thing we want to do is let's set up the auxiliary channel. I'm going to be using this channel here called short verb. It's just the one of the default send return channels that, that comes, you know, stock in the mixer. I just have it labeled as short verb in this particular template. So what I'm going to do first for this channel, auxiliary channel, is put on a EQ. I'm going to take out some of the low frequencies, which just simply don't need for this, and some of the top frequencies as well. I'm going to add on a reverb here, and I'm going to pull down the pre-delay. I'm going to pull this back to maybe a half second or so, and also I think I might change this to a dirty plate. That should do it. I'm going to add on a delay as well. And we're going to do, uh, let's just use fruity delay too, keep it nice and simple. And for this, I'm just going to pull back on the cutoff of the feedback signal a little bit. I'm going to push up the feedback amount or volume and also pull the dry all the way down. We don't need the dry signal. This is a send channel. All we want to hear is the the wet signal. Okay, so we got those set up. I'm going to send stab two over and we'll see how that sounds. So we're going to bump up this delay time a little bit. Okay, and, and I'm gonna kind of exaggerate the send amounts just for the, you know, the purpose of the video and the demonstration. Okay, so that's doing its thing. Now I want to give this um, this uh, channel, this reverb delay signal, a little bit of uh, rhythm. So what I'm gonna do here is actually I have this top loop here. Which I'm going to be you, which I'm going to use as a sidechain trigger input to duck that reverb delay signal. So that's already sent to the mixer here. It's labeled as trigger. What I did was just deselect it from the master, so there's no actual um, output, you know, that you can hear. Um, and then what we're going to do is on the short verb, we're going to add on a fruity limiter pop on over to the compressor section and then we're going to select the trigger here as our sidechain input. And before I do that though, I'm actually going to send over stab one to this as well. So. So now let's set up the compressor just to give that, that reverb delay a little bit of a rhythm. So I'm going to pull up the ratio a little bit, uh, maybe even 3 to 1, and um, give it just a little bit of an attack and then pull back the threshold till we get a nice uh, rhythm going.
Okay, so that's grooving along. And then you can really dial in kind of the groove and the fill of that pump with the release. So let's go ahead and, and, and do that. Kind of like a longer release on that for right now, so we'll leave it there. And then one other thing that you can do to kind of make this work a little bit for you, this channel, like in the arrangement process, is like take out, you can take out little pieces of the sidechain trigger. So if I like took out this last beat here, um, the reverb's going to not be sidechained anymore, so it's going to swell up. A little bit at the end of this uh, little two bar phrase. So you can hear the reverb kind of swell up a little bit, and then you could adjust that to taste with the release knob on the compressor. And I'll just turn up the stab to send level a little bit so you can hear it a little bit more exaggerated. And maybe I can even take out two beats, see how that sounds. So yeah, I mean that could be adjusted to taste and to fit with your track, but that could be great for like at the end of a phrase, it could be great going into a breakdown or, or coming out of a breakdown or some sort of transition and it can just give you a few more options in the arrangement phase. So that's just one of many, many ways to create a more effective send return channel, um, you know, for your sounds so thought i would share that with you hopefully you enjoyed it uh please leave me a comment and question i always love to hear from you um if you have any suggestions on videos that you'd like me to cover in the future also hit me up on on, on those um love to take suggestions from you and if you're interested in having me give feedback on your projects um, email me at flprojectfeedback at gmail.com. Include your project file, any questions you might have. And uh, yeah, I'll do a little video um, giving some feedback on your track. So yeah, that's uh, it for today. I'll see you soon though. Take care. Bye-bye.